guess we're monster hunters now. Ladies, gentlemen, and hunters of all ages, Monster Hunter is now upon us once again. Yeah, yeah, that joke is going to get old real quick, but it's not old yet. Monster Hunter Now, the new mobile monster hunting game, is just about to get its proper global release, and before this happens, I thought it would be a good time to get you all to grips with some tips and ideas to keep in mind as you start off on your Monster Hunter Now journey. Let's call it 10 beginner tips to improve your journey from the start. Number one, know what you're playing. There are a lot of different ways to take that, but it's a simple concept really with a lot of parts involved. This is a mobile Monster Hunter game, specifically one developed by Niantic. It has pretty damn good combat considering that fact, and it is fun, but if you are someone who doesn't usually get over involved in mobile games, but is just trying this because it is Monster Hunter, be ready for some of the hurdles that are involved. The biggest thing I would say for this specific game is that there are two ways to play properly, and neither of them is how you would play Monster Hunter on a home console, because the game is tied to your real world location. Once you clear out all the gathering points and monsters in your little circle, they won't respawn for ages. Put simply, you cannot do long play sessions of this game while sitting still unless you have already done the legwork of paintballing a dozen monsters. The two real options that you have are to play it in short bursts, check your phone once an hour while you're sitting around, play a bit and then move on, or to play it while moving, as you can walk around to move your circle and engage with your environment to find more gathering nodes and more monsters as well. This is the main intended method of play, it's trying to get you active and get you involved in that feeling that these monsters are in your world. All this to say, yeah, just be prepared that long seated sessions won't often be a thing within this game. Number two, unlocking weapon types. A lot of early footage that you've probably seen of this game is likely using the sword and shield, and the main reason for this is of course that it is the beginner weapon in Monster Hunter Now, the one that you start with. But you don't really have any other options for a surprising amount of time, and so you may be wondering when you unlock the ability to change. Well, the answer is actually relatively simple. Once you finish chapter two of the story, which happens right around HR 14, if you're just focusing on the story itself, you will unlock Great Sword as a weapon type. Further weapons come relatively soon after that, but yeah, to put it simply, the end of chapter two is when you start to unlock more weapons. Number three, monster stars. Unlike in mainline Monster Hunter games, where the star rank of a monster denotes the difficulty of its species as a whole, in Monster Hunter Now, star rankings are very specific difficulty rating for the specific monster you're looking at in that moment. There are nine star Great Jagras, for example, there are six star Rathalos. Any species can reach a high star level, so for those who have played Sunbreak, think of it more like anomaly levels, or for those who have played For You, like guild quest levels on monsters there. More stars means more health, damage, and moveset. Part of the reason I bring this up as well is to say don't get disheartened in your first few minutes of gameplay. The first star of monsters all go down in like a handful of hits with minimal effort, but as star levels go up, you really will start to make proper use of that 75 second hunt timer, so there are properly involved hunts as you progress forwards. Number four healing. A common theme in mobile gaming is the concept of time-gating content and making it so people can only play so long in a single session before they have to start paying or just take a break for a while. Before they either have to start paying or just take a break for a while. This game does have somewhat of a system like that, but it is far less predatory than you may be worried about. Yes, it exists, and yes, I don't like that it exists in the first place, but it is pretty manageable for one main reason. The mechanic is based on healing, which promotes learning because, well, there is a proper dodge button in this game, and if you play well, you can avoid ever taking a single hit from any monster, which means that you would never lose health if you do so, never need to use healing, and thus never have to interact with this mechanic and never be blocked by it. On top of that, for the first few hunter ranks, you essentially just get loads of free healing while you learn the game, so this never comes up early on, sort of like training wheels to let you get used to it and get to the point where you can avoid attacks properly. That said, it's important to be aware that this exists, and what it essentially means is that avoiding attacks is much more valuable and important to you than getting a two second faster kill because you hit the monster a bit more, because it means that you can hunt more more monsters before you need to stop. Number five, secondary combos. The weapons in Monster Hunter Now are a bit more intricate than you might expect if you haven't looked at early footage. Taking Sword and Shield is the most pertinent example of this as it's a starting weapon. If you tap the screen, you have a basic combo as long as you keep tapping. If you hold down, you can guard with the shield, but this is the cool part. If you block an attack with the shield, you essentially unlock a counter type attack where you enter the falling shield bash animation and it looks awesome and does quite a healthy chunk of damage too. The main reason that I point this out is it's just to say, experiment with your weapons. We'll have a video coming later this week talking about each weapon specifically and what they can do, but for now, just play around with your weapon of choice. Check out the different input options and see what you can do with them because there is generally more than meets the eye. 
Yeah. Like a transformer. Number six, perfect dodge. Monster Hunter now has a special mechanic when you are dodging. If you time a dodge perfectly with an incoming attack, you actually do a little bonus attack for extra damage. This uses the evasion art animation from Monster Hunter Generations, which is actually a pretty neat bit of trivia for you right there. But it is also just something to permanently keep in mind while you're playing the game. If you dodge perfectly, you do more damage, and that is technically the most effective way to play. Number seven, daily quests. As you progress through the early game, you will unlock daily quests. You want to do daily quests? Well, uh, every day. They give you an absolutely massive zenny reward compared to any other kind of hunting, so quite simply, make sure that you do these. If you can only do a couple of hunts per day, make sure they are daily quests to really boost your income a nice little bit. Number eight, use resources. Resources have a cap in this game. Think of it like you're on a permanent expedition without any tents. There is no such thing as an item box, really, so most resources will take up space within your bags. If your bags get full, you can't gather more resources, so essentially what I'm saying is spend your resources as you get them. As you progress, you will unlock a sort of auto-gather feature where your palico will collect items even while your phone is locked if you are moving around or if stuff spawns near you, and if you aren't spending resources frequently enough, you will eventually cap out and simply lose out on free things. Number 9, Multiplayer. While it might not feel necessary early on by any means, remember that this game does have multiplayer. As you progress to higher star ranks, there will occasionally be challenges presented to you that you simply don't feel strong enough to take on, at least not by yourself. There are two main options when this happens. One, you can upgrade your equipment. There's a lot of value to the equipment in this game, so that should be step one as it is in most Monster Hunter games. Option two is multiplayer. This game has matchmaking and you can have up to a party of four together on the same hunt. This makes the hunt easier. The scaling is generally favored towards players, having more of an advantage in multiplayer as well, but also because the monster only actively attacks one person at a time, the other three players can often be damaging just constantly. So essentially, remember that multiplayer is a thing, because sometimes you really are just intended to take a hunt with other people. Number 10, non-elemental weapons. This one is going to sound simple to most Monster Hunter players, but to put it simply, focus on non-elemental weapons early on in your journey through Monster Hunter now as far as crafting goes. As you start to reach higher and higher HR levels and tougher challenges, you may find yourself with enough spare resources to delve into elemental weapons, but in this game, like in all Monster Hunter games, elements are very specific. Different monsters have different elemental weaknesses and resistances. As a result, maximum effectiveness for most weapons is reached by matching the element of your weapon to the weakness of the monster, but that also means that you need to craft and maintain five of each weapon type to be ready for that. Or alternatively, you can just use non-elemental weapons. One upgrade, one weapon to maintain, and you still do almost as good damage anyways. Essentially, this is just about giving yourself less need to grind in order to gain power in general in the early and mid game. It works in this game just as much as any other monster hunter, and you should stick with it for quite a while, as it will speed up your actual grind to get to the meat of the game itself. And that really does it for today, everyone. 10 beginner tips to help you start off your journey in Monster Hunter now. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you're ready for monsters to fall out of the sky and invade our world. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye